the Lord is no respecter of persons. He never has been, and he never will be. He's not partial. His grace is available to all of us, and his love for all of us. And there's nothing we can do to earn that. That, you know, I mean, what father would withhold his love for his children um, because they don't meet his expectation? And our father is perfect. And so I remember the first time that I learned that lesson. It was February of 2014. And I had just found out that my brother was murdered. And so instantly, all these emotions flooded my heart. Grief, loss, just heaviness, rage, anger, frustration. I mean, the thoughts that went through my mind were just crazy. And I remember the Lord, he spoke to me. I had a friend praying with me and the Lord spoke to me in the spirit. And he said, Nick, I'm no respecter of persons. You're not any more deserving of my grace than they are. And you don't know their hearts. So who are you to judge them? And I was like, whoa. Right. First of all, that was like when the Lord had just started powerfully communicating. I, I should say that's when I first started seeking the Lord and listening for his answers. So when he came out and like and just laid it down like that. It was very impactful to me. It's exactly true, though, and I knew that it was true uh, when he spoke it to me. And so I've been thinking about that this morning. I had a conversation with my wife um, just about about that. I had a conversation with, with my, my friend Creighton about, about that. And then I went into the scriptures and I found three different examples of where the Lord is nailing that point. Um, hitting at home, I guess, uh, through different examples. So in Romans 2, Paul is talking about judgment, and he's talking to those who are like in a, a space of judgment where they're judging others. And he's like, like, don't you know the Lord is no respecter of persons? And so like... You can't hold people accountable to the law if you transgress the law too. Like it just doesn't work that way because then you'll be found guilty of the law because you can't like keep all points of the law except one and be righteous because it just doesn't work that way. And we all fall short. That's why it's necessary for us to have grace because then the law is abolished and we are brought free uh, from the shackles and the chains of the law. There's no shame. There's no guilt. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And so I, I also went to Acts chapter 10. And here Paul is talking to Cornelius and he he's telling him the same thing. God is no respecter of persons because he's talking, you know, it. he, Paul, was approaching, you know, these people in Jerusalem who are like holier than thou and they looked at the Gentiles a little differently and they thought that they had more favor because they kept the law of Moses right but again unless you keep the whole law you're a transgressor of the whole law so none of them are perfect so they're all transgressors but they still feel like they have the superiority and and Paul says to to, to Cornelius the Lord is no respecter of person in every nation he that feareth him is accepted of him, right? No matter where you're from, Israel, Greece, the United States, Turkey, Australia, Canada, Mexico, like every nation of the earth, he that feareth the Lord is accepted of him, right? And and that's the beginning of wisdom. He that feareth the Lord, um, <laughs> that requires faith, right? So you have faith, you fear him, which the word fear like is used then like in 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 that time frame it doesn't mean to be afraid of but it means to honor respect revere so he that honors respects and reveres the lord is accepted of the lord right and then so james in chapter 2, verse 19, 
he says exactly what Paul said. The Lord is no respecter of persons and neither should you be. You shouldn't show variability, right? Like if you're partial in your judgment, right? So if you look at somebody and say, you are righteous, although they have transgressions. And then you look at another one who also has transgressions and say, you are wicked. Then you trying to judge people are the one who actually transgress, who actually transgresses because you have partiality, but also you don't keep the whole law because you're not perfect. And because of that, you transgress because you're in judgment and it's not your place to judge. And that's what the Lord has been teaching me. He's like, and, and he's like, Nick, it's not your place to judge. But what does he say? The Lord to us, love one another. Right? Don't hate each other. He that hated his brother and says that he loves God does not and is a liar. And why is that? Because he doesn't have love in his heart. And so rather than focusing on weaknesses and things that offend us, right? Having respect of persons like these people sin, but their sins aren't so offensive to me. Like I can live comfortably around their sin, but not these. So I'm going to treat these differently. Like that is, that is not the way to build love and unity and to be one with the savior. So my challenge to you is to let go of judgment. Or if you feel like you're being judged, let go of that fear of judgment because God is no respecter of persons. And it doesn't matter what another person thinks about you. All that matters is what the Lord has already done for you because of how he feels for you. So chew on that. What has the Lord done for you because of how much he loves you?